To Kill a King are in the studio. We have Ralph and Grant. Hello, fellas. Hey, yeah. thanks Lo- for having us. Ah, you're very welcome. Lovely to meet you. Um, first thing that's popped into my head, To Kill a King. Why? Why? Uh, Why are you called that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's taken from a line from Hamlet, but I and guess... You see, uh, I guessed at the beginning of the you? show, I bet that is Shakespeare. Oh, I wish you'd have told me, because then, then I would have believed you, you know. If you, <laughs> <laughs> there's no proof or at least now, he's written it down in an envelope or something. <laughs> um, no, but that's, uh, that's, that's well, well guessed. I think you're one of the first people who've done that. Um, a lot of people think it was from some... Uh, it was, like, I think a quite bad movie about the English Civil War, yeah. which we, I think, just... In the the last maybe year we've yeah. overtaken them in terms of google searches so you know yeah, that's well a small done. ambition thank you, you know, um, i can retire yeah, happy can now. now it's cool yeah that's it <laughs> that was the main reason we just wanted to knock them off the top post of uh, google searches your work is done yeah you absolutely. can leave that's it. um was does does every single person who talks to you ask why you're called that uh, is I, it I, most favourite question of most people who are interviewing? I think quite often people are, are confused that we're not particularly against the monarchy. I mean, we're not particularly for them, but we've not got like mad plans <laughs> yeah, to uh, neutral, do away as far as the monarchy is concerned. I do quite like some. To, well, quite often when we get paid, we'll uh, be given an envelope, and it does just say "To Kill a King," and then it's stuffed with uh, cash in it. I like to <laughs> pretend that my real job is some sort of assassin. You know? yeah. um, so that's that's a nice little perk. Um, so you're not Republicans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no, no. Well, just you know, just from mu- time to musicians. time. Yeah, I think two guys trying to get by. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, um, do you have last names, or you are you just Ralph and Grant? Yeah, like I, Madonna and Beyonce. I'm Ralph Pellymanta, and this is I'm Grant McNeil. Grant McNeil. Yeah. But there's also there's more in the band, yes. so we're a five piece. Um, and the rest, uh, obviously, there's just only so many we can fit in here today, so we're going to do is more strip-back stuff. It's mm-hmm. very much a, a room issue. It's just like a space thing, isn't it? We can yeah. only really get about two or three people in the studio. Um, so how did you two get together? Were you two the founders of the of the band? Um, not really. So we've, um, we're have we a band of, uh, of uh, always changing members. Yeah, oh, it's right. like a football team almost. <laughs> yeah, we're actually... An, so we're on our third album, and I would say for me and Ben, it's our, it's our sort of artistic... Uh, third album for Grant and Tafflitz their their tricky second mm-hmm. and Ooh, for uh, James Ball it's his debut so we've got okay. you know yeah. we've got everything covered it's the whole really. range yeah. <laughs> and why has that happened is that because you've all fallen out dramatically creative differences <laughs> or is really. it just because you want to ring the changes a bit uh, I wouldn't say any uh, dramatic fallouts but I mean it's like we're a, I mean we're a small independent band and so I mean life and recording and all that stuff it does come with its own challenges and its own sacrifices so um people have decided to go their own way and then more people have decided to join i mean i'm the sort of principal songwriter so i guess like and vocalist so i guess in in terms of that that's stayed the same yeah i've not left yet now not only does uh, your band have an incredible name the name of your new album is pretty spectacular as well the spiritual dark age the spiritual dark age (laughs) it has to be said like that it has to be said like that Mm -hmm. from now on um Um, yeah and why that um, well, I mean, the the single that we'll play for you in a, in a little bit is called The Spiritual Dark Age, and hopefully that will uh, speak for itself a little bit. Um, but the the whole album has sort of threads and characters that run through it, so you've got certain songs where we're chatting about... Uh, it was uh, there's this one about it's a bar, but you've got like Odin there chatting and Juliet's there and various different characters, and then you've also got another one, My God and Your God, which is about oh, yeah. two gods two who gods uh, have, have had a fallout, but they were secretly in love all along. Yeah, um, happens all the time. Yeah, it? and which one's best? <laughs> it's relatable. Yeah, <laughs> uh, My God is better than Your God, basically. So there's a lot of themes like that running through it, and then obviously Spirit's Dark Age. We've also got one about a. Uh, a nasty chap called Peter Popoff. I don't know if you've heard of him, but do a little Google search. You'll find out. I will. I'm going to do it doing your song. Um, what are you going to play for us this afternoon? That track? Because you're going to do two? Uh, no More Love Songs and then The Spiritual Dark Age. Okay. That's okay. Fabulous. Okay, here we go then. Um, to Kill a King, playing live in the studio. So I'm heading off to find myself a new face I'm sick of staring at these thick red lines Hold on, trust the second for the first is a dirty lie Kind of kick out all your good friends When you're out of love, out of heart, out of whiskey oh. 
Out of courage, out of kicks, out of cares In all your past kisses, they sting like near misses I'm tempted to drop my guard just so you can plan one on But I'm stubborn as a thirsty mule being led to some clear pool Oh, everyone's moving on and I'm still stuck on you But I, I ain't gonna write no more love songs Cause they ain't will stay after you're long gone it's a, a dangerous game to play this crippled old matador is still seeing reginald i'm going toe to toe every time he sees a bullet Every single blow reminds him of the youthful tune And every single cut reminds him of the life he knew But I, I ain't gonna write no more love songs Cause they will stay after you're long gone It's a dangerous game Fantastic. Well done. That was great. Thank you. Um, I, I have a listener to this show and he quite often contacts me and says, Claire, you like everything. But I yeah. don't. I don't like everything. That was very good indeed. I'm glad we're not the first people <laughs> to break that. Break that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> is, is that off the new album? So that's, yeah, that's actually one of the first times we played that one. So it's not It's not been released yet. So wow. Go, a little was it exclusive? For you. Yeah. I like it. I mean, we I might like be it. using that word exclusive slightly loosely. But <laughs> let's, let's say it's, They've played it's it a million exclusive. times before. <laughs> um, I've just been reading about uh, Peter Popoff. Oh, yeah. What a remarkable man he what is. What a remarkable man. Yeah. <laughs> How did you find out about him? So, actually, there's a guy called James Randi, um, who uh, I don't know if you've heard of him at all, but he's a famous sort of debunker. So he, um, right. he's, he's actually got a standing, I think, bet with everyone that if, uh, if you can prove that you are some sort of psychic and you can uh, prove that in front of him, then he will give you a million dollars. Um, so I don't know if that's an ambition really? of yours that you would like to do, but well, if you can do that, now then you've he'll mentioned do that. it. But he, uh, <laughs> so he goes around debunking people, and he uh, he did famously debunk Peter Popoff's uh, sort of psychic skills. Yes, yeah. he he claims to be a, he mm. was a, a tele evangelist, yeah. which is really hard to say, isn't it? Exposed in 1986 for using an earpiece to receive radio messages from his wife. Uh, giving him the home addresses and ailments of audience members. Yeah, there tricky. You go. That is tricky hard one. to explain, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not very Christmassy. Should we get it back on Christmassy tracks? Let's do that. The, um, this, this song's called "The Spiritual Dark Age." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really and it Christmassy. Is our, it's our Christmas single. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, when you're ready, fans. Mm-hmm. 
And you're going to be playing next year, aren't you? You're coming back to the West Country. We are. So uh, we'll be here. Actually, um, Bristol, and we're not just saying it, but is one of our generally favourite sort of places. So we'll be playing at uh, Thecla. Um, I'm not certain on the date, but it's, it's in early January. I've got um, the 23rd. There we go. So Yeah. yeah. There yeah. we are. Um, but yeah, it should be great. It's a lovely venue and they're great people there. So, so you played yeah, there before? Like yes. Yeah. You don't mind the rocking? The um, rocking of the boat? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> it, like anything, isn't it? <laughs> um, actually, I've heard, because that venue, it's one of our favourites, but I think it might be in... It's in big, trouble, isn't big it? Yeah. trouble. So people of Bristol do speak out and, you know, get yes. that venue saved because it's good. We know a lot about that story. OK, uh, so you're going to play the title track of your new album, The Spiritual yeah. Dark Age. The Christmas single. The Christmas single. <laughs> Brilliant. Here we go. Okay. So the good man said, turns out God is dead. The worshipping signs instead, faith from books they haven't read. They're angry all the time, angry at some hole inside. Welcome to the spiritual dark age. Oh, don't lose your grip, don't get contemplative about the space we live between first breath and then the grave. No need to be saved, just some rules on how to behave. Welcome to the spiritual dark age. Oh, forget about love, it's not a hand from above It's not some dream and there's the rub Just chemicals that flood your brain The writing poetry about serotonin and dopamine Welcome to the spiritual dark age I'm not alone in you, not alone in this There's no map and we're all just set adrift It's children making pictures in the sky Arguing about who's wrong and who's right Oh, the gold man said, turns out God is dead we're on our own this time to work out what is yours and mine No reward to being kind, no quick fix for the fear you find Oh, welcome to the spiritual dark age Pass me those sedatives, pass on me sentimental Empathy and talk in general, blinkers on and take the medal The day the TV died, only tie keeping the family alive Oh, welcome to the spiritual dark age Children making pictures in the sky Arguing about who's wrong and who's right Thank you very much indeed uh, to Killer King playing live on the show. The track is called The Spiritual Dark Age. Uh, thank you, fellas. That was really great. No worries. Thanks, Thanks for having me. I enjoyed yeah. that a lot. Um, uh, something I was going to say is, are, am I allowed one comparison with you and another band? Yeah, absolutely. You might not have even heard of them. You're probably too young. Go on. Go the on. Hot House Flowers? 
Heard of them? No. No. Heard of them, no. <laughs> we will be definitely listening to them, yeah, though. Sure. Be, uh, would you? Yeah. Just for me. Absolutely. <laughs> They're a great name as well. Yeah. Hot House Flowers, yeah. yeah. Um, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the Thekla. Yeah. Uh, 23rd of January, 2018. Great. Which absolutely. is quite soon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's not Christmas too long Christmas away. Yeah. Get your tickets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Booking now. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. Cool. Thank you so much.